Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have a massive bombshell of a video today about First Lady Jill Biden that you do not want to miss, all right? We are exposing the truth about Jill Biden so you can see this and so the public can actually see what's going on. And I have an inkling of why I think that Joe Biden hasn't dropped out yet, and I think it's because of Jill Biden. I think Jill Biden is hungry for power, and I don't think she wants to leave the White House. And I think she's scared, and she's denying how, how bad her husband is. Because, in my opinion, if your spouse is doing so poorly, you know, you look so bad, you think that your own spouse would have the decency to tell you that, but she's denying it. So, we're going to dive in, and we're actually going to expose the deep, dark truth about Jill Biden because I do not like this woman and we are going in hard, okay, after this video. If you would like Jill Biden now, after this video, you're not gonna like her anymore. <laughs> so thumbs up the video, but before we do, we're gonna read the Bible because God comes first, amen? Amen, and here on my show, we read the Bible, we drink coffee, and we share the truth, all right? So if you like that, click subscribe, baby. <laughs> I'm drinking a cup of Trump this morning, not a cup of Joe, okay? I refuse to call it a cup of Joe. He ruined that name for me. Okay, this is Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him. Because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we all need God's protection right now. And let's pray for America. Let's pray for our own communities. And let's honestly just put faith in God right now that he has a plan. Because if I would have said... You know, if I would have, could have even imagined the way our world has gone within the past three, four, five years, you know, I would have no more hope anymore. But remember, our hope comes from God. Amen? All right, let's get started with this bombshell against Jill Biden. All right, we ain't holding back. All right, so if you haven't yet seen this video clip of Joe Biden, I want to play this first because it really just cements in how poorly Joe Biden is doing. He just had an ABC News interview with George Stephanopoulos. In my opinion, I think they're now, the media in the White House and everybody, they're kind of preparing the public for Joe to step down. Because look how bad he looks in this. And I can't believe. I mean, this is a complete humiliation of Joe. Let's watch. Tonight, in an exclusive high-stakes interview, President Joe Biden sitting down with ABC's George Stephanopoulos. Let's start with the debate. Uh, you and your team said have said you had a bad night, but you're, but you're. It's not funny, Joe. It's like, dude, this is very serious. The whole world is laughing at you, and you're up here laughing at yourself. Your friend Nancy Pelosi actually framed the question that I think is on the minds of millions of Americans: Was this a bad episode, or the sign of a more serious condition? It's a bad episode. Uh, no indication of any serious condition. I was exhausted. I didn't listen to my instincts in terms of preparing and, and a bad night. 
you know, you say you were exhausted, and, and I know you've said that before as well, but you came, and you did have a tough month, but you came home from Europe about 11 or 12 days before the debate, spent six days in Camp David. <laughs> he said he was exhausted, but he was literally just chilling at his beach house in Delaware for six days. I mean, how much more rest do you need, Joe? You're our president, for crying out loud. Why wasn't that enough rest time, enough recovery time? Because I was sick. I was feeling terrible. Matter of fact, the docs with me, I asked them, they did a COVID test. They were trying to figure out what was wrong. They did a test to see whether or not I had uh, some infection, you know, a virus. I didn't. I just had a really bad cold. And did you... Why are you holding a pen, by the way? He keeps he, he bringing up his pen like he's about to write something down. He doesn't even have any anything to write on. <laughs> did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. How do you not remember if you watched your own debate? We have a president who can't even remember if he watched his own debate. It's not even been a week. I know that I watched the debate. Have you, do you, do you know if you watched the debate? How can Joe Biden, I don't know if I watched the debate. Dude, what? Well, what I'm trying, what I want to get at is what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look. The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody there he goes, holding up that pen like he's about to write something down. Nobody's fault of mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that, you know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate nine now or whatever the hell it is the fact of the matter is that what i looked at is that he also lied 28 times i couldn't i mean the way the debate ran not my fault no. joe donald trump did amazing during the debate okay it's not time to go after trump trump did outstanding all right he did amazing. You talked a lot about your successes in the, at the beginning of this interview and and i don't want to dispute that i don't want to debate that but look at him he looks lost as you know, elections are about the future, not the past. They're about tomorrow, not yesterday. And the question on so many people's minds right now is, can you serve effectively for the next four years? George, I'm the guy that put NATO together, the future. No one thought I could expand it. I'm the guy that shut Putin down. No one thought it could happen. I'm the guy that put together... You can tell not even George from ABC News is buying this BS. <laughs> Joe looks ill, he looks frail, he looks sick, and George actually asked him if he would take a cognitive test. Watch this. All that work over the last three and a half years cost you physically, mentally, emotionally. Well, I, I just think it cost me a really bad night, a bad run. But, you know, I... George, I have, I'm optimistic about this country. I don't think we're a country of losers that he parts out. I don't think America's in tough shape. I think America's on the cusp of breaking through in so many incredible opportunities. This next term, I'm going to make sure we have a straighten out the tech. D Joe Biden has no idea what's going on in our own country. Dude, have you seen what's going on in the cities? Have you seen the homelessness crisis? Oh, yeah, our country's doing great. You know, oh, yeah. It's like, I don't even think... Joe Biden has gone out there and seen that, look, this is going on in our, in our streets. Go, what's going down at the border? Border people sneaking in. It's, it's, it's crazy chaos. Our country is not doing well, Joe. This is, I mean, the, 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 some of this footage, people are dying, dude. He needs to, he needs a wake up call. All right. And I, I want to turn the page over to Jill Biden. Cause that's, I know that's what this video is about. But it's a mockery. This is her first. Uh, this is Biden's first public appearance following the the debate. Let's watch this. I saw in him then the same character that I see in him today. And even though he has faced unimaginable tragedies, his optimism is undaunted. Look at Joe. He looks. I don't even know what to describe. I, I feel I'm almost feeling bad for him at this point. His strength. I see in him today, 
and even He looks like a scared, frail old man who just put got diarrhea down his diaper. He's got a di diaper full of green, yellow diarrhea that's dribbling down his leg right now, you can tell. <laughs> so he has faced unimaginable tragedies. He just wants to go home and eat some ice cream. He just said, Jill, can we just please go home? I just want to eat some Rocky Road ice cream. Now, uh, Jill Biden's going viral for this one. We, we have to watch this, guys, okay? Where's the sound? Let's get some sound. Thank you all enough for staying and for being here and for all your support. a great job you answered every question you knew all the <laughs> she's talking to him like he's a three-year-old and let me ask the crowd what did trump do Why? i can't i don't know what jill's agenda is but it's not good and thank you all enough for staying you answered the questions joe you answered the questions. Good job, buddy. You did it. You did it. You did it. I talked to my four-year-old nephew like that. You don't talk to a grown man who's the president of the United States like you're talking to a four-year-old. And for being here and for all your support. So weird. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. <laughs> this is, you cannot make this up. Now watch this. This is uh, Jill Biden during an interview. I think she has a hidden agenda. I think she wants to stay in office more than Joe Biden does. Potentially another four years in the White House yes. with everything you do here. Does yet another one give you any pause thinking of like the personal health and well-being for both of you, the division in this country, the cruelty of MAGA Republicans against your family? Does any part of you once in a while think, oh, Maybe we bow out. You know, that's why I want to go through yet another campaign. Because I... You know on MSNBC, of all news stations, they're the most liberal. They're asking you to bow out. You know the liberals are not supporting Biden anymore. I think, as Joe says, democracy, our freedoms are what's on the line. And so Americans have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, they can have strong, steady leadership. Mm -hmm. so Which is Donald Trump. On fighting for democracy. That's Donald Trump. Or they can choose chaos and division. What a joke. What an absolute joke. You know, this is actually, all this debacle going on is actually extremely good for Trump because... The, the Democrats are completely lost at this point. They're not united at all. They don't have anybody to unite around. They got Karen over here interviewing Jill Biden about how old and frail her husband is. All right? This is a Jill Biden actually helping Joe Biden off the stage. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but look how well Jill Biden is walking and her husband. And then Donald Trump leaves the debate stage like, no problem. He's like, yep. That was easy. On to the next. Let's do another speech. Let's do another rally. For Trump, that was just another day. But look at Joe. Look at, look at, they're trying to struggle to help Joe off the stage. Dude can barely walk. He's got to go down the steps one at a time. You know, like a little, a little two-year-old does? They go down the step one at a time. He couldn't even get down the, he could barely get down that step. That step was the most impressive thing he did all night was go down the step. Bro. Oh my gosh, bro. Go back to the retirement center, buddy. He looks like he's lost, like he's sleepwalking at the retirement center. And they're going, go back to bed, Joe. Go back to bed. The nurses. <laughs> First Lady Jill Biden is now being criticized by Republicans for supporting her husband staying in the presidential race. Republicans' latest freak out is over this. Her August Vogue cover that was... She was on the cover of Vogue? She's the ugliest woman I've ever seen in my life. Released today, Jill Biden told Vogue that they, quote, will not let those who's, rather, will not let those 90 minutes define the four years he's been president. We will continue to fight and, quote, we'll always do what's best for the country. Mm, as a reminder, Dr. Jill Biden, what kind of doctor is she? The first lady in Vogue's August cover. You know what's crazy, guys? 
is that they never put Melania Trump as she, when she was first lady on the cover of Vogue. They never put Melania in. And Melania is a supermodel for crying out loud. And quote, we'll always do what's best for the country. Hmm, as a reminder, this was Jill Biden following her husband's disastrous debate performance. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the He's like, I did? He's like, I was just reading off the teleprompter. I didn't even know what was going on half the time. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? Tell the truth. Yes. Reacting online, Meghan McCain tweeted, quote, Jill Biden will not be remembered kindly in American history. Meanwhile, billionaire and CEO of Pershing Square, Bill Ackman tweeted, quote, I'm no, I no longer blame POTUS Biden for not stepping aside. He no longer has the mental acuity to make important judgments about himself. It's becoming increasingly clear, however, the fault lies with Flotus, Jill Biden. For yeah, so people are actually coming together now and saying that it's actually Jill Biden's fault. Jill Biden is the one who's, you know, convincing her husband that he's doing a, an okay job, which is uh, remarkably in, completely idiotic. First Lady Jill Biden has become irrelevant. Uh, Jill Biden becomes irrelevant the moment that her husband is no longer president. Yes, lots of discussion of Jill Biden. That's interesting. So this guy here, Bill Ackman, who is Bill Ackman? Anyways, I'll look that up in a second. He goes, Jill Biden becomes irrelevant the moment her husband is no longer president. No more Air Force One. No more glamorous life. No more White House dinners for dignitaries. No more being treated like a queen when traveling the world. I'm sorry to be harsh, but what has become entirely clear is that the first lady values what is best for herself over her husband's health and the safety and security of the country at large. I have to agree with this man. I actually do believe he's an American hedge fund founder. Oh, he's a billionaire, $9.3 billion. I hope this guy helps donate to Trump. I, I don't know. I, I like this guy. I have to look, look more into Bill Ackman in a second. He goes, um, stress is a contributor to neurological deterioration and the doctors must have told her so. Think about how much stress she is putting Biden under making him continue. It's almost like elder abuse at this point because you have Jill Biden who she, she can talk fine, right? Jill Biden, she, 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 you know, she seems obviously she's, you know, old, but it's not about age, right? It's not about age guys. It's about your mental acuity. Jill Biden can talk fine. She can think fine. She's not oblivious to what's going on. She knows that her power is getting weaker, right? She said, you answered every question as an old man as she walks him off the stage. She treats him like an infant. She gets the crowd wound up and cheering at events. Perhaps she thinks the crowd is cheering for her. Her power is clearly grown as he gets weaker and she likes the feeling of power. She speaks for the president when he can't or when he is napping. She tells his team and staff when he is available and when he is not. She likes being in control. We all do. Which begs the question, how many decisions of the president are actually being made by Jill Biden? Her quote unquote friends likely don't tell her the truth as they want to continue being invited to the White House to be able to say that they are friends with the first lady and the president. Jill Biden is destroying her own legacy along with the president's. The whole thing would just be a tragedy for the Biden family if it didn't put the country at greater risk in a world in turmoil. Perhaps she didn't understand what in sickness and in health meant. Boom. That was huge. Now let's tune in uh, to, Do to Donald Trump Jr. exposed the truth about Jill. This is huge guys. So thumbs up the video. Let this be your come to Jesus moment with any liberal you know. Donald Trump Jr. joins me now. Sir, you have been obviously fighting this fight, screaming this from the hills. They call you crazy and a conspiracy theorist. Turns out you were right about everything. Uh, yeah, I pretty much nailed it. I mean, Carl, I wrote the book Liberal Privilege in the summer of 2020. I mean, I literally <laughs> talk about Joe Biden's cognitive decline there. I interviewed doctors who knew him, who were around. Ronnie Jackson, who was literally a chief medical officer of the White House while Joe Biden was there. Uh, and talking about cognitive decline, talking about what would be the statistical possibility of someone having two, two major brain aneurysms like Joe Biden has had and not having very significant cognitive issues because of it. It's, it's almost an impossibility. 
uh, probably an impossibility, certainly with the added stress of this. So if someone like me, who at least maybe this time now I'm basically a journalist, but at that time I wasn't just writing as a concerned citizen, was able to piece this stuff together and talk about it. How did the rest of the media get away with lying to us about it? Telling By the way, I love when Donald Trump Jr. and Newsmax actually has him on because Fox News hasn't had Trump Jr. on for like over a year now. It's sick how Fox News doesn't invite on Trump Jr. He has some of the best commentary that I've ever seen. Us, that this man's going to be in charge. He's the guy you want to pick up the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning when something goes really wrong. No one, no, no one in their right mind, Carl, would trust Joe Biden if he showed up in an Uber. They, they'd be like, you know what, hard pass, I'll walk. Uh, but we're going to let this guy make trillion dollar decisions? Or yeah, literally, if, if Joe Biden was an Uber driver, I would be like, no, 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 I'll get the next one. <laughs> where people's lives depend on it. No one's that insane. And yet the Democrat media apparatus, big tech, the Democrat party in general lied to our faces. They told us it would be great. This guy is going to be wonderful. He's incredibly gifted and talented. Meanwhile, we're watching the world burn and the economy crumble. It's yeah. just not right. And there needs to be accountability and consequences to the Democrat party for pushing yeah. this nonsense. Because if they'll lie to us about that, they'll lie to us about anything. And that's yeah, I mean, it that's a really good point. Sorry to cut them off real quick, but they're actually saying that people, there's nobody actually trusts Joe Biden. Do you, does anybody trust Joe Biden to make these world decisions for America? No, it's just they're people are too afraid to, to face reality. That's my point, Don. It's like, you know, I've, I've seen this and I've actually, over the last few days, I've actually had a couple libs, like moderate libs, not the far left purple haired weirdos, uh, but a moderate libs come up to me and be like, hey man, like maybe you were right about some of this stuff. How vital is this and, and what, what are people doing to seize on the fact that we can now actually have a conversation without them shouting us down and calling us racist? Well, listen, I, I think what we have to do is we have to get involved. We have to stop trusting the usual sources. And honestly, even a lot of, you know, the conservative talking heads, I mean, they, they are the ones peddling a lot of these lies as well. You know, we have to get away and break away from that uni party in Washington, D.C. Am I a conservative talking head? I hope he's not talking about me. Yeah. From the elites on both sides, we have to start working for the common man and woman of America. That's what my father promised to do in 16. He delivered on those promises. They took it all away from him anyway. We've seen nothing but abject failure, disaster, death, and destruction uh, in the three and a half years since then. We have a chance to get our country back on track. But make no mistake, Carl, there is no shame to these people. You know, again, whether that's the Democrat Party or if it's the rhino faction of the Republican Party, like Paul Ryan, you know, on the board of Fox News. They'll tell you whatever they need to tell you to have their puppet of choice put into the White House, put into any kind of position of power. We need to fight against that. We need to put people in power who are actually beholden to the people, not to the party, not to the nonsense of D.C., not to the big war machine, not to corporate interests, but to the hardworking men and women of America. My father did that once. He can and he will do it again. And that's precisely why they're going after him as hard as they have been. Whether it's the Democrat media apparatus, the Democrats themselves, big tech over the last five years, or honestly, even yeah. big, uh, you know, supposed right wing stuff that's been attacking him for two and a half years until they realize, well, he's going to be an inevitability. So we'll hold our nose and we'll go with it as long as we can try to harness or prevent him from doing anything that would actually be beneficial to the people who voted for him. So, Don, obviously, Biden has this big meeting at uh, with the family this weekend, decides whether or not he's going to stay in the race. Uh, Hunter Biden, apparently, according to reports, are the biggest. He's the biggest advocate for Joe Biden to stay in the race, stay in the White House for obvious reasons. But who do you like? You think they're going to replace him? Do you? Who do you think they would get to replace him? And it, they got this big problem called Kamala Harris. All right, guys, let's tune in. Let's hear what Trump Jr. has to say. Yeah, well, Hunter Biden clearly, because he's got his own legal problems, he needs to make sure that pardon's on the table. I'm sure they negotiate some sort of deal where that would be a guarantee anyway. Again, there's nothing the Democrats won't do. But honestly, I think at this point, it's Jill Biden. I think she's literally evil at this point. She's hanging on for power. She loves the attention. She loves being you know, heralded around the world as the first lady and flying around in Air Force One and having motorcades. And she's not going to walk away from that lifestyle. She's on the cover of Vogue yet again this yeah, week yeah. after <laughs> Joe Biden's miraculous performance. And you saw after the debate last week, Carl, she talked to him. Joe, you answered all of the questions, Joe. 
Great, great work, Joe. <laughs> it's like, you know, I talked to my four-year-old when they were that young. I don't, you know, now that my four-year-old is 10, you know, I, I don't talk to her like that anymore, but we're talking. I have a four-year-old nephew, and that's exactly how I talk. I actually don't even talk to him like that anymore <laughs> because he's already, he's more mentally fit than... <laughs> I have a, I think I have a two-year-old nephew who I talk to like that. It's like a petulant toddler, but you're right. The mental gymnastics that the Democrat Party is going to have to come up with to bypass the first female woman of color, blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh, it's a joke. It's a complete joke. And I wanted to play this before the video ends, but look at this. This is a comparison between Melania Trump and Jill Biden's uh, White House Christmas decorations. Jill Biden, I mean, this is, this is sick what they did to the White House. They put all, th this is the Christmas that they, that they put in the White House on the right. Look how beautiful it is on the left. That's Melania. And Jill Biden's on the right. It's absolutely sick. It's, that's not what Christmas is about at all. And you got these people with weird costumes on. Short, tight. I mean, this is like disgusting. It's disgusting. I mean, it's, hu it's humiliating for these dancers. Do you think these kids grew up on the right and they said, oh, you know, I want, when I grow up, I want to be a dancer. And they, they're part of this political agenda. It's so weird. So bizarre. I mean, I would not dance on that for $10 billion. <clears throat> I mean, the, especially the dude with the, with the hat on, with this, this dude right there. There's something weird going on with that dude. I mean, not him, but like they're, they're making him dress up like that. It's so bizarre. This is not what Christmas is about. Jill Biden, there's something wrong with her. There's something extremely wrong with this lady. And she actually had the audacity to say that Joe Biden's age is an asset. Let's watch this. And then Biden returned to the campaign trail in the past week, had stops in Pennsylvania and South Carolina. And yesterday, Mika Brzezinski sat down for an exclusive interview with First Lady Dr. Jill Biden at the White House, a candid discussion about the demands and challenges of another political campaign. Take a look. Your husband is 81. At the end of the second term, he'd be 86. As his life partner of 46 years, is there a part of you that is worried about his age and health? Can he do it? He can do it. And I see Joe every day. I see him out, you know, traveling around this country. I see his vigor. I see his energy. I see his passion every single day. Mm. So, to those who say, I can't vote for Joe Biden, he's too old, what do you say? I say his age is an asset. Oh my God! She must be delusional if she actually, there's no way she actually believes that. That Joe Biden's age is an asset. Sorry guys, I'm looking up what she's at, they keep calling her Dr. Jill, Dr. Jill. She's a doctor of education. She's a doctor of education? She got her doctorate degree. Okay, whoop de doo you had enough money to go get your PhD, or sorry, your EDD. You're a doctor of education. It's not like you can actually perform anything. You know what, anybody can go out and get, not anybody, I mean, yeah, mostly anybody can go out and get your doctorate degree if you take out enough student loans or if you go, if you have enough money. Just means it's what you do after your master's degree. It means you don't, you didn't have a, you didn't want to go out and work. Basically, anybody who goes out and gets their doctorate degree, they're like in their, I'm not trying to put anybody down who gets their doctorate degree, but it's like, come on, dude, just go get a job. They don't, they just stay in school forever. <laughs> From the University of Delaware. I'm not putting down doctors. I'm sorry. But the fact, I'm just putting her, I'm putting her down because they keep calling her Dr. Jill Biden. Doc, like it's some huge accomplishment. She's a doctor of education. You can watch more of Mika's exclusive interview with Dr. I I'm sorry, but it's just, it's just, it's just a complete joke. Biden relaxes on Delaware Beach with wife. Exactly, she doesn't want to lose, she doesn't want to lose this lifestyle that she just get to motorcade around in Air Force One and she has all the attention around her and her husband is clearly deteriorating in front of her own eyes. I mean, people don't realize this is, this is Joe, this is our, our president. He can barely move a lawn chair. I sent this photo to, or this video to one of my friends and they go, that's not Joe Biden, is it? I go, yes, it is. If you turn on the news, well, the news don't show this stuff, but look at him. He's probably what, 
He probably doesn't even barely know how to use a phone. He's probably watching Peppa Pig on there. Oh, I love Peppa Pig. <laughs> One of my favorite shows. Hey, Jill, look, I'm watching Peppa Pig. She goes, that's great, Joe. That's great. <laughs> Keep watching Peppa Pig. I mean, what an absolute joke. The dude can barely, you know, press a button on his phone. And nobody's even talking to him either. You know what's funny is when Joe Biden goes to these events, have you seen these Christmas? Um, he was giving Christmas gifts. Joe Biden, and nobody was even looking at him. I can definitely not find this video, but... Is this the one? There, there's one where Joe Biden's like walking around. No one paying attention to him. Joe Biden was walking. I'm sure YouTube won't show this, but he was like walking around and nobody was paying attention to him. Or there's one with Joe or the Obama. I, I got to find one of these clips. No one paying attention to Joe. Gosh, I, I need to do better research on this. Oh, yeah, here we go. Nobody even looks at Joe Biden when he was walking around. Joe Biden was captured on camera looking exasperated and alone. There's one of them where he's literally trying to hand gifts to children and all the children are running away from him. But look, this is our president. More people are paying attention to Barack Obama than Joe. Joe's like, where do I go? Somebody point me in the right direction. He's like, should I join it? You know when you're like at a, at a, at a party, you don't know anybody? You're like, should I go to this group, that group? You're like, that's what Joe looks like. But this is at his own house. <laughs> this is at his own, own house. Look at that. Nobody even, nobody even pays attention to him. And look, he's trying to get jo uh, Obama's attention. Look at him. Nobody, nobody even, and he goes, hey, Joe, hey, Obama, Obama. Hey, you remember this joke? <laughs> look at him. He's literally holding on to Obama's shoulder. Hey, look at me. Somebody pay attention to me. Obama doesn't even look at him. <laughs> How hilarious is that? Obama, look at me, look at me. Obama doesn't even look at him. Obama's shaking somebody else's hand. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. You're at a party and you're tra you're holding onto somebody's arm and they're high-fiving somebody else. How embarrassing is that? He looks, oh my God. He's like, hey, look over at me, look over at me. <laughs> Holy moly. Jill Biden, what an absolute joke. What an absolute joke. Jill Biden is the rotten core at the center of Joe Biden's train wreck. Joe Biden's week from hell will not end. Following the train wreck of a debate last week, all eyes are on Joe Biden's next steps. Will he stay and fight to the bitter end or will his family persuade him to bow out before he destroys his legacy? Yeah, Joe look at Biden Jill. Jill loves this. Escorting him slowly down the stairs of Air Force One. Jill does not want to give this up, my friends. We got to remember that. Jill loves this. In my opinion, I think it's all, all Jill Biden. Jill Biden's Trump bashing backfires. Let's watch this. Jill Biden with the ladies of The View making these claims before the debate. American people deserve a debate because you need to see your choices. You. Oh my gosh, you went on The View? With Joy Behar, oh yeah, these ladies are definitely well equipped to handle our first lady. You need to see Trump and you need to see the president and you need to see the differences. And my husband's, and you're going to see how smart he is. And oh, we did see the differences, Jill. We're going to see how smart your husband is? Are you joking me? The experience he has. And then you'll see somebody who, like you're saying, I'm going to use Joy's words, Go can't ahead. put a sentence together. <laughs> Yeah. You're describing your husband. <laughs> she really said it's Trump who can't put a sentence together. Old joke. Trump, yeah, I mean, you can't go after Trump for being a bad speaker. Trump is quite literally the best speaker ever. Probably the best speaker ever. This is the 4th of July event. Uh, happy 4th of July from Joe Biden. And by the way, you know, I was in that World War I cemetery. Uh, in France, and uh, <laughs> the one that my one of our colleagues, the former president, didn't want to go and be up there. I probably shouldn't even say it. Anyway, <laughs> we gotta just remember who the hell we are. 
We're the United States of America. We need to remember who the hell we are. Shut up, bro. Don't refer to the United States as who the hell we are. That's, that's an embarrassment. You're the president. And there's nothing, nothing beyond that. I mean this in the bottom of my heart. There's nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing when we do it together. And by the way, you know, I was in that World War I cemetery. He was in a World War I cemetery? What? What are you talking about? Oh, is this when they, they called him Let's Go Brandon? Jill and I are here to wish a happy Lunar New Year to everyone who celebrates. This is a time of renewal, a chance to celebrate. Remember the joys and sorrows of the path that brought us here. And Jill Biden loves this. You can tell she loves being the center of attention. So anyways, let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Take care. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon.